I do hope some of you have been looking into that small collection of books. You know, there was George Dempster, and as a very young fellow, I read one of his books, Finding Men for Christ. And, of course, I was thrilled, you know, and Mr. Dempster used to go after some of those drunks and others, some of them being professional men who had lost everything from drink and the breakup of the family. And uh, he would find them amidst the cardboard boxes, underneath the bridges, and win them to Christ. My, how my heart was thrilled to see that. Uh, and of course, we have a reprint of one of those books, Oh, Love That Will Not Let Me Go. Is that the reprint? Yeah. He has four books, Finding Men for Christ. I believe I know all the four. And, uh, you know, folks, when I started preaching in Europe, I found that certain words were taboo. Now, what are those words? One, Perfection. Oh, don't talk about perfection. We must grow well. You know, in the gutter, that's, that's, that's what one should talk about. What did Jesus say? Be you therefore perfect, even as your heavenly Father is perfect. So he, he put the measure there. And so, what's wrong about talking about seeking to be like Jesus? I don't believe I have any business to be any otherwise. You see? Okay. And then, other word, of course, you know, her father was horrified when his son went home from one of our retreats and told his dad, Dad, you know the preacher prayed for me that I might be a prophet. Oh! And the father was horrified. You see, if he had been a soccer player, if I had prayed, let him play soccer. And all his life kick the inflated piece of leather. Oh, probably he would have been very happy. You know, folks, look. We must get rid of some of our borrowed notions. Let us pray. Gracious Father, draw near to us. Let us not be a bunch of apes, aping the people who tr talk a lot of smut and revel in uncleanness as though that is their final destination that they are called thereunto. We thank you that you have a higher appointment for us. We pray, pray that we might find our appointment and walk humbly with our God. Draw near to us, we pray you. 
And even as Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the king's viands and wines, so also help us to walk and tread this short earthly pilgrimage of ours with a purpose in every footstep. Please grant it, Father. We seem to live aimlessly as the weathercocks dictate. The weathercock is not to dictate how we ought to move or go. Certainly not the winds that carry the chaff away. Lord, draw near to us. Cause us to be purpose-led and weighty directed by the Holy Spirit. So help us in Jesus' holy name. Amen. You know, my dear friends, it is amazing how people would like a nice Christian veneer, you know, in the old days, people used to be so proud of beautiful wood or, you know, teak doors. That's, those, that's all kind of veneer, you know. Just plywood. Some of our old buildings, you know, we are trying to bring down one of our old buildings over a century old. And uh, those are British built old buildings, all teak. You know, today, people can't afford to buy teak. It's very expensive, of course, very beautiful and durable. The wood. So, there are certain things which are of great value. And those things which are of great value are not what the world gives us today. It just gives us a little paint, a little veneer. And we say, hey, that looks nice. You know, things are not made to last. And unfortunately, the idea of marriage today is fine if it works and okay if it doesn't. You know? Two a penny, hot cross buns. We used to sing, you know? But today, they will say 20 a penny. Not hot cross buns, but brides. Hmm. Just find them, throw, discard them. Well, when we come to the gospel, what would happen if you took the cross away? You took the cross out and said, Hey, this is wonderful. 
Peace I give unto you, my peace give I unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. These words there have I spoken unto you that you might have joy and that your joy may be full. Yeah, I want the joy. I want the peace. Of course, people will say, I'm all ready for it. But when you mention the cross, hey, there's a price to be paid for it, old boy. And uh, what's the price? The cross. If you turn to Matthew chapter 16, you will see from verse 21, please, from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from you, Lord, this shall not be unto you. But of course, the Lord Jesus Christ was not going to be kind of uh, given that kind that sort of unspiritual comfort. Some people give to us very unspiritual comfort. I do not know what kind of people you hang around with, but, uh, you know, some people can give you very unspiritual counsel. The Lord Jesus Christ gave him, in return, the right kind of rebuke. 23rd verse. Get you behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense to me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Isn't that true generally about all of us? We just walk according to what, you know, is the done thing. You know, what's the done thing? And the done thing is horrible. You know, someone said to me, in one part of the country, I am referring to the subcontinent of India now, one part of the country where Christianity dates, they say, from the time of the apostle, Thomas, and so on, someone said, Oh, the dowries around here, that is, a bride must come up or a father of a bride must come up with a huge sum of money to get the daughter married. And then, can you imagine what is it currently, say, you know, sometimes in uh, parts of Nigeria and other parts, it is the rivers. A boy must be able to find 20 buffaloes. Otherwise, you can't get my daughter, you know. I need to be presented with 20 buffaloes. 